Hello, everybody, and welcome to this morning's episode of FinServe Tech Oracles. I'm Jerry Murphy. I'm here today with our Chief Technology Officer, John Burke, and we're here to share our thoughts on technology for financial services firms. For this episode, John, I thought we'd discuss, uh, you just did a recent Numerities Advisory on the use of AI in companies. Now, I know it was really more geared around robots and factories, but it got me thinking about, you know, AI clearly has got a ton of hype. I mean, there's just uh, recently um, NVIDIA's CEO, they had their investor uh, retreat and it was like a rocks. I mean, they had to literally uh, rent out a baseball stadium to do the mm -hmm. thing because the, 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 the crowds were tremendous. So clearly we still have much, much, much hype and tons of promise in AI, but Sometimes I think we're at the edge of the uh, trough of disillusionment cliff. So I'm just thinking, what do you see for with respect to financial services as the sort of the biggest opportunities for using AI? And I'm thinking more specifically generative AI. Sure. Um, and yeah, generative AI, it's going to be interesting. As we've discussed before, uh, you know, financial services has a long history of using the uh, machine learning side of AI extensively in fraud detection and other things um, where generative AI is likely to have a role um, is going to be sort of in the next evolutionary step on that side of the operation. So, you know, new, improved, bigger, better, faster, stronger fraud detection and uh, loan application assessment and all those other kinds of things that sit on the boundary between words and numbers uh, and that banks have to engage to do their business. Uh, we also see a big uh, upside for financial services on the operations side behind the scenes for IT and especially for cybersecurity. Uh, again, uh, helping ride that edge between numbers and words where you're detecting phishing attempts, you're detecting social engineering, you're resisting those attempts uh, and uh, making use of that facility with language uh, to supplement uh, the, even for financial services, even for firms with a lot of money to spend, the, the difficulty of finding and retaining skilled staff. Uh, so they're, they're going to be making up for the fact that you don't have, you know, 40 people in your sock. You've only got 20 right. people in your sock. You know, I wonder, uh, you know, the, the fear that runs through my bones sometimes is that all of that capability that allows people to do stuff better, unfortunately, is also going to help criminals do things better. I almost wonder how much of this is going to be a springboard to making, you know, fraud, actually generating fraud and, and creating more realistic, harder to detect ruses to try to bilk, you know, institutions and people of their money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we're already seeing that, of course, people have been using large language models to uh, amp up their phishing game, you know, the, the texts that get sent, the emails that get sent as the leading edge of that to try and get you to click a link or download a document and open it on your machine inside the supposed firewall. Um, all those things are already happening. Uh, on the on the plus side, uh, right now, the, the folks who are looking into this at places like Microsoft and, and Google don't see the bad actors using generative AI in, you know, novel ways. They're, they're just using it to sort of amplify their efforts in already understood uh, tiers of the uh, criminal black market, be it from, uh, you know, helping them develop compromise code or helping them optimize the package that gets delivered if you click on the fluffy bunny picture uh, all the way through as i said helping them craft the language of the emails the text etc yeah so i mean besides that sort of obvious risk to companies and obviously financial services companies are huge targets for this are there other risks that you see people uh, in general, making in how they're going about uh, applying the use of AI that uh, they, they need to watch out for? Uh, you know, rushing into it very quickly uh, and uh, maybe with too many resources 
uh, up front in some parts of the business anyway. Uh, we, we see folks getting into it without fully considering some of the currently inherent shortfalls in large language models. Uh, you know, the, the uh, what do they call it, hallucination aspect right. of things uh, and the hypnotism aspect of things that you can, if you have access to the AI, subvert it and get it to do things it's not supposed to do. Um, uh, including revealing confidential data, protected data, whatever. Right. So uh, we don't see any problem with companies using AIs to help them generate marketing materials. We do see problems with AIs being used to uh, uh, do inquiries, do data mining in uh, confidential databases and the potential for leaks or bad actors to turn that to their advantage is, is pretty high right now. People need to be taking careful steps to make sure that somebody's watching the hen house because they're inviting the fox in to, to help them <laughs> with the eggs. Well, that's a great, uh, I love that analogy about uh, helping the fox uh, watch the hen house, which, which kind of leads me to another point. You know, sometimes I see, and you see this in the press too, where people are saying, oh, well, you know, we have all this gender of AI, so it's going to, you know, one, help you where you don't have enough staff. But, you know, in some places, I mean, even in the Wall Street Journal this morning, they're talking about there's this downward pressure on uh, IT and uh, IT employment and that the, some of these entry level jobs just aren't going to be there because they're being replaced by AI. I mean, do you think AI as it currently is now, especially the generative AI, uh, obviates the need for having expertise in those areas? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> um, just like you wouldn't have a staff of uh, only uh, inexperienced employees or barely experienced employees, you know, people after their first year at work, you wouldn't have a staff populated only with them. You need uh, people to keep an eye on things, to be uh, watching for those unreasonable uh, shifts in behavior to be watching for those suspicious shifts in behavior. You need supervisory teams. You need expertise to know what to look for. So no, it doesn't obviate the need for those higher level positions. It increases them. Uh, what I see is the real potential problem is that by uh, replacing swaths of swades uh, of the uh, uh, entry level positions out there, they will decrease the funnel feeding into that higher level of expertise. There won't be as many people uh, gaining that level of, of comfort, that level of knowledge, that depth of knowledge, uh, because there won't be as many starting out. That's a, that's a great point. So if I can sort of get what some of the main points are here, uh, AI, generative AI certainly has a lot of potential uh, I think we would all be wise to be looking closely into it and identifying the potential. Um, there are absolutely opportunities where we can increase and use it uh, to improve our security as well as other operations. Uh, however, you probably want to go at it slowly and deliberately, and it not only does it not uh, obviate the need for experts, it almost makes you need more expertise so that people can really watch over what it's doing and put it in the appropriate context, lest they run into trouble. Fair enough. Yep. So uh, thanks. Thanks again, John, for your time and insights. And that's it for us until next week. Thanks everybody for watching, listening. You can register for this entire series online, please do. And otherwise we look forward to uh, seeing you in next week's uh, FinServe Tech Oracles. Take care. Thanks all.